In this video, I want to talk about the definition of what evolution is and really break that definition down and be really specific and hammer home what we talk about when we, when we say something is evolving or evolution is occurring. So I'm going to present a definition of evolution and step through each of the key features and provide examples and really try to, to hammer this home what we mean by evolution. So evolution is any change, and we mean any change, in any aspect of the genetic composition of a population. So any change in any aspect of the genetic comp composition of a population over time. So we're going to break down each one of these components. So first, any change. This really means any change, any at all. Often we first think of natural selection, and you'll often hear people informally or sometimes even in educators or in journalists will talk about natural selection and evolution and use them almost interchangeably. And often a lot of the really interesting stuff in evolution that we care about is due to natural selection. For example, cold survival genes, genes that allow an organism to survive during the cold would increase during an ice age. Genes that facilitate living in hot climates increase when global increase when global warming increases, climate change increases. Lots of really interesting things occur due to natural selection. But also any change means any change. So it can be completely random change with no selection going on. So for example, if all of the blue eyed people in a classroom happen to get sick, and they therefore got fewer, had fewer kids later in life. Viruses aren't selecting for anything in particular, have nothing to do with blue eyes, but just a random change could result in changing the, the frequency of genes. Um, if all the blue-eyed people in a classroom got sick, there would be fewer blue-eyed, and they had fewer children, then there would be fewer blue-eyed children among the population uh, down the road. Again, any change means any change. So if it's just dispersal or immigration, individuals with interesting genes, different genes coming into a population, joining the population, that changes the genetic composition. So this is the last two examples that have been just made up. But a real example is off the coast of um, Western Canada. There are populations where there are albino bears on islands, and every time an albino bear swims over to a new island, they are bringing their genes for albinoness into that population that uh, just by joining the population, by swimming over, they are ch changing the genetic composition of the population. Sexual selection is another uh, form of uh, selection that can also change gene frequencies. So, and it's not just change, but it has to be change in the genetic composition. So it has to be a genetic change, not just a phenotypic change, but a genotypic change. It might or might not alter phenotypes. There are many ways that evolution can happen that are completely unrelated to phenotypes. So phenotypic changes ultimately have to be due with changes in coding sequences or with gene regulatory regions, but if a change to a non-coding part of a gene to the third base in a codon to part of an intron to somewhere between two genes, all of those are genetic changes and all of those constitute evolution. We often call these with silent or neutral mutations if they don't have any impact on the phenotype. It's still evolution. Also, it's not just changes in the coding sequence. It can also be changes in chromosome size due to translocations, changes in chromosome structure or shape or number. All of those constitute genetic changes. Those are forms of evolution. However, it needs to be noted that DNA methylation is not a genetic change. It is an epigenetic change. And so Epigenetic changes, DNA methylation, histone methylation, acetylation, those do not count as evolution. Key word here that we need to pay attention is genetic composition or the frequency of alleles. So we want to pay attention when I unpack what we mean by the genetic competition, composition. 
So really, a single mutation occurring in a single individual is not really so much evolution. It's about changes in the composition, the broader population composition, so changes in frequencies. So once a mutation occurs or an immigrant comes and then that gene spreads, that's really what we're interested in. So it's when a mutation increases in frequency over time um, via that individual's offspring that we really care about, or an immigrant coming into a population and its genes changing in spreading over time, that's what we really care about. Key to this definition is population. It's really all about changes at the population scale. So somatic mutations in an individual do not matter. Phenotypic changes that aren't under due to underlying uh, genotypic changes don't matter. It has to be changes in a population over time. So evolution is a population level process. Things that happen at the individual level do not matter. It has to do with the spread of the alleles through the population. So individual dies, but it's the persistence of their offsprings and their genes over time that results in evolution. So this makes time a fundamental element of things. A, it, the time scale can vary. You can consider it over any unit of time. It could be a single generation, really. A single round of mating can result in evolution. But often we're interested in um, multiple years, such as hundreds of years or, or hundreds of thousands of years. Though, over the course of a single year, a bottleneck, a founder effect can occur, and that can dramatically change a population. So what's more important is that time passes um, and genes mix, the gene pool mix, and the population changes.